Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of comparison tests, and these are only going to tell us if a series converges or diverges. We're going to compare it to another known series. First of all, <laughs> we're going to need all of our terms to be positive or at least zero. They cannot be negative. So let's take a look at this first statement. This statement says if you have a series that you know converges, and there's this other series that you're trying to figure out what it does. If all of the terms in this other series are smaller than the terms in this known convergent series, then since this converged, then the second series must also converge. That should make sense to you. I'm adding up smaller terms, and if this first series had terms that added to a finite number, that we had a limit, then the second one must add up to something a little bit smaller, so therefore it's going to converge. On the other hand, let's say you have a known series that you know diverges, like 1 over n or something like that, or like 5 over, over 2 to the n, where, where 5 and 2 are both to the n power, you know, geometric. You know this diverges, and you have this other series, you're trying to figure out what it does. If all of those series, if, if all the terms in this other series are larger than a known divergence series, then obviously it's also going to grow to infinity or diverge. Let's take a look at how to use this. Let's say I've got this summation 1 over n cubed plus 1. And what I need to do is I need to go take a look at or go find a series that I know does something that looks like this, that I know converges or diverges. Now, if you take away the fluff of this plus 1 down here, I'm going to compare this to the summation. Wow, let's uh, forget that that happened. The summation, okay, that's better, from 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed. If you take away all the fluff, that's basically what we have here. Now, we know that this is a known convergent p-series. We know that this converges. This is a p-series with p equal to 3, which where I went to school is greater than 1, so we know that this series converges, and that's basically what this looks like. So if I can prove to you that all of these terms are actually smaller than these terms, and you know this converges, well then this also converges. So I'm just going to plug in a couple of, of numbers to this one and to this one. So if I plug in a 1 here, I get 1 over 1 cubed is 1 plus 1 is 2. And if I plug in a 2, I get 1 over 2 cubed is 8 plus 1 is 9. And if I plug in a 3, I get 1 over 28. Now what about these over here? This is 1 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 27. Now these terms, 1, 1, 8, and 27, we're going to compare directly to these terms right here. Okay, so these numbers are larger than these numbers term by term. 1 is bigger than a half. 1 eighth is bigger than 1 ninth. 1 27th is bigger than 1 28th. All of these terms are larger than these terms. What do we know this does? We know it converges. This would actually converge to something smaller because all the terms are smaller. So if this series converges and we've shown that these numbers are smaller, then this must also converge. In this instance, this would be like my a sub n, and this would be like my b sub n. The, the, the first part is you have to pick a series, and you have to know what that does, or this, is not, this uh, test is not going to help you. So let's take a look at another one. What about 1 over 3 to the n plus 2? Well, if I take away what I call the fluff, the stuff that doesn't have much to do with you know, the power of this series is what I call it. The 3 to the n grows very large, but two, you add 2 to 3 to the 50th and you haven't done much. I would compare this to 1 over 3 to the n. Now we also know that that is equal to 1 third to the n because 1 to the n is still just 1. So I'm going to compare this series to this series. Let's find out what they both do. If I plug in a 1, I get 1 over 3 to the first is 3 plus 2 is 5. And if I plug in a 2, 3 squared is 9 plus 2 is 11. And if I plug in a 3, 3 cubed is 27 plus 2 is 29. I'm just going to compare the first couple of terms. And then over here, let's plug in our 1, we've got 1 third. Then we plug in our 2, we've got 1 ninth. And we plug in our 3, we've got 1 27th. Now we know this is a known 
convergent. What kind of series is this? When you have a fraction to the power of n, geometric series, with r is equal to one third, which is less than one. So we know that this series would converge. On top of that, we could figure out what it converges to. Now, this series is not identical. However, term by term, what can you say about the numbers? Aren't all of these numbers smaller than these numbers over here? And if all of these numbers are smaller and we know this series converges, then this obviously converges to something less than this one. So they, at least we know that it converges. We just don't know what it converges to. All right, the other side of this, <coughs> excuse me, um, let's take away the minus one and let's compare this to 1 over the square root of n, which by the way is 1 over n to the 1 half. And what kind of series is that? There I did it again. My thing is freaking out with my e. What kind of series is that? This is a known divergent p series with p equal to 1 half, which happens to be less than 1. We know that that diverges. So let's just compare the terms together. And we're starting at 4. You always have to be careful about that. So if I plug in my 4 for n, I get 1 over. The square root of 4 is 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1. Plus. Now we'll plug in a 5. I don't know what the square root of 5 is, so I'm going to keep it as the square root of 5 minus 1. And then if we plug in a 6, I get 1 over the square root of 6 minus 1. Now over here, starting at 4, if you plug in a 4, the square root of 4 is 2, so I have 1 half, plus, and then if we plug in a 5, 1 over the square root of 5, and then plus 1 over the square root of 6. Now let's compare these term by term. On this side, what we're comparing it to is actually smaller. 1 half is smaller than 1. 1 over the square root of 5 is smaller than 1 over the square root of 5 minus 1 because this one has a smaller denominator. Smaller denominator means larger number. So this is actually, these terms over here are smaller than this, but we know that these terms, if you add them out to infinity, these terms will diverge or add to infinity, and these terms are larger. So therefore, by the direct comparison test, this series will diverge. Now let's take a look at something when you can't necessarily tell term by term. It might alternate a little bit at first. If you've got a lot more going on, you might not want to try the direct comparison test. We're going to try the limit comparison test. The limit comparison test says that if you have two series, one of them you're going to have to pick yourself. The other one is going to be what you're given. If you divide them and take the limit as n goes to infinity and you get some finite number, then you know one series is just a multiple of the other one. And, or a fraction of the other one. And something I'd just like to tell you, you know, it's like two times a convergent series is convergent. If something adds up to 10, then two times that is 20. Two times a convergent series is convergent. So if you divided two series and you just got that the other one was twice as large, well, twice as big as a convergent series is still convergent. And by the same token, one third of a divergent series is still divergent. One third of infinity is still infinity. So what we're doing here is we're just going to basically divide them and find out what happens as we approach infinity. And if we know we've found one that is actually just a, a multiple of a known series, we'll know whether it converges or diverges. So this says that if we do that and we get some finite and positive number, then the two series both converge or both diverge. And I'll give you a hint. If you don't get a finite and positive number, you pick the wrong series to compare it to. So this is how I would approach this one. I would call the plus 10 the minus n cubed and the plus 7 fluff. I'd actually call the 4 here fluff. I would compare this. I'm going to take away all the coefficients and I'm going to compare this to the known series 1 over n. Now why is that? If you ignore the plus 10 and the n cubed and the 7 and the 4, you have n to the 4th over n to the 5th. I'm only looking at the powers. The, the most important thing is the largest degree that you see n to the fourth over n to the fifth reduces to 1 over n. And I happen to know that 1 over n diverges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this limit as n approaches infinity of this divided by this. And I'm going to use my Bobo Bot and Beatsy rules. 
and if I get a finite and positive number, then they're both going to do the same thing. And in this instance, they're both going to diverge because I know 1 over n diverges. So let's just get after this. What is the limit as n approaches infinity of? Now, if we divide two things, we actually have to flip the other one over and multiply. So I'm going to turn this into times n over 1, and I'll distribute the n. So I've got n to the fifth plus 10 n, sorry, over 4n to the fifth minus n cubed plus 7. Now we know that with Bobo, Bot, and Beatsy, if it's bigger on bottom or bottom heavy, it goes to 0. If it's bigger on top, it goes to infinity. But if they're both equal, you take the ratio of the coefficients. So we get 1 fourth. What we are saying here is that this series is basically 1 fourth of this series. But we know this series diverges. And so in this instance, we're basically saying 1 fourth of a divergent series is still divergent. Since my limit was both finite and positive, this diverges. Let's take a look at another example here, and then I'm going to make a statement to you about taking away the fluff to simplify your life. Here, I would compare this to what? What do you think I'm going to compare this to? I'm going to take away the minus 2, and I'm going to compare this to the series 1 over n cubed. And that is a known convergent p-series. With p equal to 3, which is greater than 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this by 1 over n cubed. And I'll flip it over and multiply. So I'm going to times n cubed over 1. So I will get the limit as n approaches infinity of n cubed over n cubed minus 2. And what is that? This is, again, they're both equal. And they better be, or you pick the wrong thing to compare it to. This equals 1. So they both do the same thing. So this is a convergent series. I compared it to a known convergent series, and I got that basically those two are the same thing. They're just like one times each other. If you're subtracting two out in the trillions or whatever, you're not really doing much. These series are pretty much the same thing. Now, that's how you show your work, but I want to talk to you just real quick. I want to erase this and tell you exactly how I would be approaching these, especially if you're just wanting to get the answer right. So I'm going to erase this. And if, if I'm going too fast here, of course, you can just back me up. Let me tell you how I approach this. Now, on the free response part, I would need you to show all that stuff. But if you're just looking at a multiple choice question and you're trying to figure out under the heat of the battle uh, what, what happens, I would always ignore fluff. Always ignore fluff. Always ignore fluff. I would always simplify. Only look at the biggest power that you see. And so I'm going to have n to the fourth over 4 n to the fifth. I'd even ignore the four, but that still that bothers some people. This simplifies to 1 over 4n, which you can take the 4 out, and we get the 1 fourth of 1 over n. This is basically 1 over n. So if it basically is 1 over n, it's going to do what 1 over n does. It's going to diverge. Again, here, part for part b, take out the fluff. And then just look at the biggest powers, 1 over n cubed. You know that that's a convergent p-series. So if you take out the fluff and can just break it down, you should be able to tell what it does. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you that, and uh, I guess I will see you guys tomorrow.